Ladies and gentlemen, I am shocked. I can't believe the response from so many leftists after it was announced Elon Musk has secured his agreement to purchase Twitter. I'm just shocked to see what I can only describe as hypocrisy and double standards. I never, never would have expected to see this from so many woke individuals and liberal personalities, because, of course, everybody knows that they're honest. They're real news. They've never challenged election results. OK, the bit doesn't really work because that's all they do. But I guess the point of the bit is just to express the opposite of shock. The it's, it's the banal. It's the mundane. It's 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 Elon Musk buying Twitter and us going, OK, OK, you know, count the minutes until they start putting out their hypocrisy. So here's what Elon Musk is saying. He says he's excited to buy Twitter. He's going to make his all in one app. And something about this lawsuit is just weird. I mean, Elon tried backing out of the deal. Now he's back in the deal. Twitter says yes. It's very strange because Elon has every reason to buy Twitter outside of all of this nonsense. Outside of any claims about the Babylon Bee, that may just be an excuse. Elon's trying to build AI. He's trying to build robots. Access to Twitter data? It's going to help him to create an AI or robot. It's going to give him an endless stream of data and responses. That firehouse is extremely powerful for what Elon Musk is working on. Plus, he wants a method of communication, interplanetary communication. Twitter works for that to a certain degree. It might take 20 minutes for your tweet to appear if you're sending it from Mars to Earth. I think it's like 20 minutes, right? 20? But that's Twitter. It doesn't matter if it happens now or happens in 20 minutes. This kind of messaging could work. DMs, all that, it could work. So this is it's greatly beneficial to Elon Musk. But why try to back out? I don't know. No idea. He's saying he wants to create an all-in-one app, and I think Twitter is his path to doing it. I don't know if he's going to actually implement some kind of doge tipping system like people have suggested, but it's going to be interesting. I think Twitter will have payment processing. It'll be communications. It will be a lot. Now, of course, as you all know, the left is sort of, they're, they're losing their mind. These woke employees are, are panicking. They're posting these tweets. But I want to start by just highlighting one simple tweet from Robert Reich, who said, when multi-billionaires take control of our most vital platforms for communication, it's not a win for free speech. It's a win for oligarchy. These people are just evil. I, I just can't put it any other way. This is the perfect example of of a powerful, wealthy individual spitting in your face, laughing about it while sipping his fancy, uh, what what, what kind of drink should he have? Champagne? Actually from the Champagne region of France. That's right. He's sipping on that pinkies out, spitting on you over and over again. This is him spitting on you. And when he was defending big tech, that was him spitting on you. These these liberal elitists, they uh, the, the, the Democratic Party is the party of the wealthy elite. It's been that way for almost six years. They've typically, in my view, always been urban elites and urban elitists. And here he is. It's amazing. So you mean Mark Zuckerberg's control the platform? Who cares? Okay, well, what about Jack Dorsey, also a billionaire? Who cares? What about Jeff Bezos buying Washington Post? Who cares? Elon Musk? Oh, no, now it's oligarchy. Here's one. Where, where do we have? It? OK, this guy says it's called fascism when corporations and government are in control together. You mean like the Alex Berenson lawsuit and the documents that he's released showing that the government was asked, like was trying to get people banned from big tech, from social media platforms? It's absolutely amazing. And what we're seeing now is interesting in the wake of the news. It's, it's always something weird going on with the news of Elon Musk buying Twitter. A lot of people are reporting that they're losing followers. Now, in April, I think it was around April, when it was announced that Elon Musk was going to be buying Twitter, I gained 162,000 followers. That's really weird. In the news, following uh, uh, in the news about Elon Musk now moving forward and and, and moving past his lawsuit, I have lost 7,435 as of yesterday. I don't know or care. I mean, to be completely honest, over the past month, I've been losing a bunch of followers on Twitter. And it may have to do with the fact that I really just don't like Twitter and don't care. 
You know, I, I guess I've had periods of gaining followers, but I never, I mean, there's, there's a, in May, I lost followers in 2021. I've gained followers, lost, lost followers in the past, uh, in the past uh, week or so. I've been losing, I don't know, what did I lose? About 4,000 per, uh, on average in the last 30 days. Is that what it is? Well, that makes no sense. How is that? Oh, okay. I gained some, I guess. Oh, right. It doesn't show you the full. So I've lost 4,000 in the past 30 days, meaning despite losing quite a bit in the last week, I've actually gained a few thousand. But anyway, I digress. You know, I, I've been tweeting things, trying to poke the bear to see like what the rules are. One thing I just want to mention as an aside, I was thinking about cancel culture, the things you can't say publicly, things that are too offensive. And so I was like, what if I advocated for like sterilizing kids and, and aborting babies for the sole purpose of a parenting overpopulation? Like if you were to tell someone to spay and neuter their kids because of overpopulation, that should be seen as like shocking and abhorrent. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. That's maybe one of the reasons I'm losing followers. So maybe some people cared, but probably more conservative types. But that was my point. I tweeted something like, have you considered spaying and neutering your kids to prevent overpopulation to make a point? And that point is that Twitter won't ban you for saying something like that, even though that's substantially worse than what most people get banned for. Anyway, I digress. We've been seeing people lose followers, and I think everyone's actually losing followers. Even Robert Reich himself is down about 119. So my question is, what is going on behind the scenes? There is foul play afoot. I got to say foul play. The fact that I gained all these followers in April, and then the, and, and even into May, I gained way more than average. That's really crazy. 162,000 in April, 70,000 in May. And then was it June was 37,000. I suppose I've had months where I've seen big growth, but that was like during the election. Something weird was going on. And what we saw was accounts like Josie, the redheaded libertarian. She had been arbitrarily suspended for no reason. All of a sudden had her account reinstated. Tons of people were pointing out that right when it was announced, Elon would buy Twitter. All of their accounts got reinstated. I wonder if a component of what the lawsuit was and why Elon was doing this was to try and shock and jostle the system. I don't know exactly, but I'll tell you, Elon's whole plan, everything he's doing seems to make no sense. He's like, I'm going to buy it for $54.20 per, $54. per share. Then all of a sudden he backs out, says a bunch of, makes a bunch of claims. There's a, there's a weird spike right when they announce he's going to buy it. Then he holds off for several months. Then he says, okay, I'm buying it full price. Everything's fine. Some people are saying it's because he's embarrassed. Maybe, but why not come out and be like, okay, fine, let's end this lawsuit, 50, 43 billion. Save himself a billion dollars. Why wouldn't he even bother to negotiate down on price? Even if Twitter was in the right, I know how it works with these lawyers and these judges and all that. They're going to say, Twitter, instead of fighting, just say one billion off, fine. But he just came out and was like, no, it's fine. I have to wonder if he was doing something, if there was something going on behind the scenes we don't know about, because now we're seeing more Twitter user purges. Perhaps many people are saying this is a bot purge, which is why everyone is losing followers, even people like Robert Reich. Here we go. Let's take a look at some of these, uh, these tweets. Ruman Chowdhury says, living the plot of succession is effing exhausting. I am sitting on 2023 company-wide strategy readouts, and I guess we're going to collectively ignore what's, ignore what's going on. One person says, uh, tweets by Parker, he says, writing my little emails today, and it shows a little girl crying while drawing with crayons. 2023 planning, whoa, this is worthless. Yo, y'all knew this was happening. These people, you've had advance warning Elon Musk was going to be buying the company. Did you think he wasn't going to? Twitter was suing to force it. Now, this is a good tweet, by the way. Parker Lyons says, nobody. Meta recruiters for the next 48 hours, and it's this weird what is this? This weird priest that looks like Mark Zuckerberg with the cross, I, I guess. Open arms. That's a good one, actually. One guy said, I encourage every Twitter employee to go outside and take a walk. And then it shows someone walking through this weird, rocky, I don't know, fashion show or something. OK, whatever. One image featured a mock up of Mark Zuckerberg as a priest welcoming newcomers to his flock. Dude, I hope they all go to Facebook. This is something I'll tell you internally. You know, we're talking about proper promotion for the news articles we write at TimCast.com. The, 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 here's, here's how it's supposed to work. We write the news because we think it's important. I hire a bunch of journalists because I care about factual news. However, news does serve a purpose. People want to read the news. They, they see these stories and they, they grab their attention. When people do, it brings them to TimCast.com. 
from there, we're hoping we can convert some of these people into members. Now, we've not fully implemented that system, but it's basically advertising, right? Our journalists are wholly just supported by you. But in talking about social media, we're like, what's the point of Facebook anymore? It's just a bunch of older people. No offense to older people, but, you know, look, we're going to implement uh, some kind of Facebook sharing strategy for articles. But the reality is nobody cares. So how are people sharing articles these days? Twitter actually is picking up a lot of it. But younger people don't use Twitter either. So this is going to be interesting. I wonder if a reason, a big reason for the push towards TikTok and Instagram is that the powers that be say, we want media social, social media formats, not social text formats. You know what I mean? With Twitter and Facebook, articles can be shared and shared very well. This shatters narrative control of the big corporations. You eliminate them from the next generation. You, you tell the next generation, you don't need to worry about Facebook. Facebook's for old people. Get them to use things like TikTok where they're dancing and posting memes instead. And then the next generation won't be sharing news articles. They'll be sharing memes and let the news do the news and the TV tell you the news. And these platforms will ban anybody who dares challenge them when it comes to narrative control. Maybe. Elon Musk says, buying Twitter is an accelerant to creating X, the everything app. What does that even mean? All right. I imagine he's going to have some kind of like payment processor, an app for, for cars, for Ubers and all that stuff. Sure. Fine, I guess. But phones are basically this. I have a phone. I open it. I have car. I have text. I have, you know, payment processor. I have bank messaging. So uh, mess- messaging, messaging. And so what do I need one app to do all that for? I don't know, but I suppose that's what he's doing. They're going to mention it's a surprising U-turn. Now Twitter is up to $52. But I do think it's absolutely fascinating that the hypocrisy is so easily exemplified with things like this. Robert Reich, he's got a bunch of tweets like this. Many on the left, they have tweets like this. I find it absolutely hilarious. OK, all right. Let's let's see what what, what the left is saying now. Let's see. Duty to warn. What is this? Duty to warn. What, what, who are they? 359,000 followers. An association of mental health professionals warning about Trumpism. They tweeted, Elon Musk is a national security threat, a Russian friendly Republican billionaire who has promised to flood Twitter with misinformation, a.k.a. free speech and bring back Trump uh, and is threatening to buy Twitter. What? Again, he must be stopped. Most important, we're five weeks away from a crucial midterm election, and we know the right wants to distract us with shiny objects and put forth any messaging that might keep us from voting. So it's important to see any new development announcement like this one in that context. What an accidental admission right there. We are very close to a midterm and the right wants to be able to share information. They're they're telling you what they do. I love this. On the Wikipedia page for little old me, it says something like Tim Pool has amplified claims that that conservatives face persecution at the hands of big tech. And I'm like, dude, they're screaming it in your faces now. We have documents released showing the White House going to big tech being like, why aren't you banning these people? We have government funded organizations putting out lists saying like these people are spreading misinformation. How much more evidence do you need? I was right. It is true. It happened. And it was Gizmodo who first published the story that Facebook was suppressing conservative news. That's a leftist publication. Now they're outright saying it. They want to bring back free speech. But free speech means misinformation. What does misinformation mean? That's the, that's the important point. Disinformation and misinformation are two different things. So what does misinformation mean? Are you implying that they want to allow people to be wrong? Disinformation refers to people trying to spread intentional misinformation. Misinformation means people are wrong. I think people are allowed to be wrong. Should people, uh, are people not allowed to be wrong? That's an amazing thing, because then who determines who is right and who gets to speak? This is the game they are playing. It's absolutely just amazing. Here's another one. This guy, I don't, this, this guy, this is just, you know, I don't know this guy. It's 10,000 followers, tennis blogger. It looks like Twitter has had a big purge and removed all the bot accounts. That's like a quarter of the Rafa fan base on here taken out in one single scoop. Then we have uh, Jake Shields here saying people are losing followers because Twitter needs to purge the bots before Elon takes over. Perhaps Rob Reiner. Ooh, let's see what he had to say. 
Eyes on the prize. Vote blue. Indict Trump. Save democracy. Any any word uh, on uh, uh, on Elon Musk? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think that many of these people have said what they've had to say, and they just all they can do is tweet about Trump. Rob Reiner's got two million followers. But here we go. We know the game. We know what what they're doing. We know why they're doing it. In response to duty to warn, we have a lot of people. One guy said, Russia friendly. What are you talking about? His family have paved the way donating to Ukraine during the crisis. His Starlink system has given Ukraine a lifeline in the war. Also, stop lying. Clearly, Elon's actions speak louder than words. This is, isn't it quite interesting? Duty to warn. They say that he's a Russia friendly Republican billionaire, despite the fact that he sent Starlink to Ukraine, which is one of the principal reasons for their success. Their ability to communicate on the front line has remained strong, and Russia is not happy about it. Now they're trying to claim that the U.S. was paying for these satellites, but Elon Musk comes out and he's like, or for these, these, these uh, satellite dishes, Starlink receivers or broadcast, whatever you call them. And Elon's like, that's not true. Like, we're paying for the, for the majority of this. Elon Musk comes out with a tweet saying he wants there to be peace. We don't want nuclear war. The big news we have right now that I may uh, save for 4 p.m. is that Ukraine is preparing for a nuclear strike. I'm sorry, I'm with Elon Musk on this one. Dude's not perfect. But when he comes out and says we need peace, we don't want, you know, escalation of war. He's right. In response, the warmongers, the bots, the leftists, the liberals are all like, war, yeah, blow up more kids. (laughs) Obama did it. I love it. The Democrats are all about just killing kids. Let's throw it. Let's go. Let's go there. Let's go there. For whatever reason, many of the Democrat policies lead in one direction, killing kids. Less kids is probably a better way to put it, but killing kids, yes. So there's a conspiracy theory. The conspiracy theory is that there is a cabal of powerful political elites that want to reduce the population. What a crazy conspiracy. Me? I don't have any information that would prove their intent to do so. I do know that Bill Gates has publicly stated we should reduce population growth. So I guess it's not a conspiracy theory if he says he wants to do it. Sure. But you take a look at Democrat policy, and this is a bit separate. What have you got? Abortion, advocating for and expanding abortion, sterilizing kids. Well, whatever the intention is there, I don't know. It may just be women's rights and it may just be protecting trans children. Fine. The end result is going to be less people. And then my favorite Democrat policy, Barack Obama blowing up kids, blowing them up. Too many of them. That was a Seamus's joke. He was like, Barack Obama's like, got to blow up kids. Too many of them. That's what he was doing. War accomplishes population reduction. So you take a look at their advocacy for a potentially nu- a potential uh, nuclear war. And it's like, do you want dark ages? Because this is how you get dark ages. I suppose they've been preparing for it, I guess, with their bunkers in New Zealand or whatever. So they're less concerned about if nuclear strikes wipe out most of the world population. I don't see it as being likely. But I, who, who, who am I to say? Things happen. That's it. Do, you know, is it in, I, the question I like to ask is, is it in the realm of possibility? Is it possible that a nuclear strike hits several major cities and kills billions of people? Yeah, of course it is. We know these weapons exist. Tsunami bombs, multiple independently targeted reentry vehicles, MIRVs, as they're called. 50, the Satan 2 50 megaton warhead. Then you've got gravity bombs like Sar Bomba, which was, uh, what was it, the 70s? 100 megaton gravity bomb. Gravity bomb is when they just drop it. So yeah, very powerful, devastating weapons. Not to mention bioweapons. Who knows what they've developed there? So if it really is true that their policies are leading in that direction, it's no surprise that they want and encourage war and lie about it. This account right here is the perfect example of how the left lies and manipulates. Elon Musk wants peace. Elon Musk donates satellites to help Ukraine. Hey, I've been waiting for Starlink forever. And this guy sent him off to Ukraine. I'm like, yo, what about me? Well, I eventually did get my Starlink and uh, the upload rate isn't that great, but they do work. It is good. Low latency, low orbit, uh, low Earth orbit satellites. It's a great development. I wish the upload rate was actually like usable. I thought it was going to be 100 megabits. It's like five. Can't really do much business wise with that. But for a lot of people who live in the middle of nowhere who have no Internet, this is access to high speed Internet at the snap of a finger. Standard satellite is low latency. 
So we've got a couple satellite. We, we've got a, a satellite backup here for Timcast for the studios for the show, and the speeds are like five or six megabits, but the latency is like 350 milliseconds, which kind of sucks. It kind of sucks. So that means when we when we do IRL and we've we've fallen back onto satellite when the internet's cut out, uh, and it's really amazing at night. Like we'll lose power or something happens, and then we're using satellite to broadcast. It works. It's choppy though. With Starlink, it's better, but it's just not fast enough. There's not enough data transmission for us to do the broadcast like we normally do. So anyway, I digress. Here's the point. Elon believes there should be more people. He's publicly stated it. He wants to buy Twitter. These people think there should be less people. There's a battle for good and evil. There are people who want to, who believe there are too many people, whatever that manifests in, either because of climate change or for whatever, they want less people. How will that manifest itself? Simple. They will engage in policies of death and destruction. That's a negative. Elon Musk says we need more people. I agree with Elon Musk. More people means more labor, means more specialties, means more technological advancement. But what we need is proper management. And the problem is cities are overcrowded and disgusting. We need a cultural change of some sort. It doesn't mean you have to eat bugs, get chickens. There's a, uh, we're, there's a meme that I think, I think, I don't know if one of our crew made. And it's a chicken saying, I will eat the bugs. I will live in the pod. And then I will give you my eggs. And I'm like, hey, that's a pretty good one. We should make a shirt. I'm not going to eat the bugs. I'm not going to live in the pod. I'm not a chicken. My chickens will do that for me. And then I will eat their eggs and then eat them. The best part, chickens make more of themselves. How about that? This is the hypocrisy. I'm excited, man. It's Wednesday. I don't know when this deal is going to be finalized. I, they say by next week. Well, all right, then. Let's see how that plays out. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.